Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Thanks for joining in. I wanted to take you on a special piece of my journey as a photographer where I am seriously considering changing photo alteration software. Moving from what I have almost harped on every show from Paint.net into trying out Krita. So let's explore that and let's see where this goes. Okay, so I imagine the first question that's probably coming into your, in your mind if you've been watching and following along with my journey is why the change? Well, I've heard a lot about Krita. I have family members who use that for a lot of purposes for their own graphic design needs. And honestly, I'm just very curious about its capabilities. You know, what can it do for me as, as a photographer with doing post work on my pictures. Uh, Paint.net, honestly, has been great. I still will come back to that as um, my go-to source, at least for the moment, but I'm willing to give this a try because this is becoming a widely, openly accepted tool with lots of new features that Paint.net does not have. It supports digital pens. It's a vastly larger tool set with capabilities for brushes and, and all kinds of things. So. I'm very curious to, to tap into that, to see how hard of a transition it is and really just start testing out the waters for this sort of thing to see if that larger community of users could be a better fit for my journey. So if you're following along, I hope this is helpful to you as we try this out. So let's jump in. So. I did give this a quick test drive the other day just so I wouldn't be completely cold on this, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not far from that point in time. So some of this is going to be a little raw, a little exploratory. We'll be getting our fingers into this and trying to figure it out. There might be Googling or binging or searching along the way here, but I wanted to try this out and I wanted to let everybody have an opportunity to see this from a beginning perspective. So if you are at a beginning point or considering doing this, you can see how hard it might be <laughs> right along with me to get the uh, the first-hand experience, so to speak. So let's do this. I took some pseudo isolation shots the other day, and this was my first test here. I'll just call this up so you can see, and it actually came out pretty clean uh, for what it was. I just took some eight and a half by 11 matte pieces of paper and put an apple on it and took some shots, and I felt like that was pretty effective. Uh, for a first pass through. So I want to try that concept and then we'll move on to some more complicated ones of pictures that I took, you know, my day-to-day -day photography uh, exploits and um, we'll try some of those out. But I want to try, you know, start small, <laughs> small challenge. So let's dig in here. Uh, this one, let me just see, let's find one of the soldiers, guys. These are my kids' toys. I was just kind of grasping at things that might be easy to isolate. All right, so that one looks pretty good, 122. Let's bring that into Krita. Now, my initial observation, my very first thing that I said wow about when I went into this is that I noticed that it natively supports raw images. That is a huge thing because in paint.net, you have to do a lot of background hacking to make that work out. So <laughs> two thumbs up already for Krita on that for opening up a raw format support. That made my job just so much easier to get started. So, looking at the soldier picks here, you can see how it's kind of pseudo white already. Uh, what I wanted to do is give a little bit of enhancement and embellishment to that. And what I would typically do in paint.net, which I was able to easily replicate here in Krita, I was very pleased to see that if we duplicate the layer, that's this symbol with the, the, kind of the two squares over here, if we duplicate that, you have this layer control right on top here, and there's an overlay option for that. And what that's going to do is it's going to compare the two, and it's going to overlay, as hence the name, the same colors, but it's going to intensify all of them by 
a, a full leap. I'm, I'm going to guess somewhere in the tune of about 50% more. You can see those reds really pop now. Those silvers really look alive. That's what the overlay is going to accomplish for you. And I was really, really happy to see that that common vernacular is still here in Krita. So that also helps make the white truer white, which is helpful. And to bring us the rest of the way there, what I'm going to do is tap a little bit more into this add layer control. I'm still figuring out some of this, but I did figure out very quickly because this is somewhat intuitive on this part that you could do a fill layer. And what that gives you the option to do is if you're just going to throw a layer in there, it's just going to be a solid color and that's it. This is a nice quick shortcut into that functionality. Now, I want white because I want true white for what I'm working on. And whoa, where'd the picture go? Okay, I'm just playing with you. Um, that is on purpose because again, what I want to do is I want to do another overlay on top of this. Now it's a little too intense. We're washed out and we're, we're losing what we had there. That's okay. I want to use the opacity control right above the layers here and start dialing these in a little bit so it doesn't overpower. I might do that a little bit here with this original overlay, lay, overlay layer so it doesn't look like it's been oversaturated as well. We want to maintain some realism in the shot, or at least as much realism as you can get from a toy soldier. Eh, you can be the judge of that. But you can see how we have a very close to true white impersonation of that. And that was actually some really quick and easy isolation. And if I wanted to go further on this, I think what I need to do, I haven't figured out how to link layers yet. If you know how to do that, please share with me. Um, Cause that's still kind of a mystery to me here. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to essentially manipulate all these at the same time. And right now, the only way I know how to do that is to merge down. So I'm going to stick with that. That's kind of the paint.net approach. I'll figure out a better way as we go. I'm going to use the merge with layer below. Uh, it does the same thing. <laughs> That's a, I guess not a caveat of not just paint.net. You have to merge them in the order that they apply. That makes sense. Oh, hey, who's talking about? I'm glad you joined in. Good to see you can group layers. Okay. So I guess the question would be how, <laughs> where is the group layers control? That looks like that does locking. Uh, is it just a matter of selecting them and, oh, group. Look at that. Hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Control G. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, what we want to do with those then is I'm presuming that now that they're a group that I can now, can I do them all at once? How do I do? So what I want to do essentially is shrink them all at the same time. I'm not sure if I'm using the right tools for that though. How do I do that? I've got one layer. Do I have to like lock them all or something? Uh, this looks okay. I'm getting a little help from a family on the side here. <laughs> Somebody who's walked this walk before. All right, so I select, oh, okay, there it is. Now I see it all on the top up here. Yeah, okay, that wasn't immediately clear to me. Some of this is a little uh, off the beaten path because, well, paint.net does layers. It, it does not do grouping, and I haven't really done uh, grouping of layers since Photoshop, and that was since version 5, and that was years ago. So I really haven't figured out how that uh, control works as of late. There we go. Look at that. All right. So... What I don't want, though, I want to maintain the aspect ratio. Ah, I think I confused it. What happened? What I do? Bring it back. All my layers are gone. Huh. <laughs> okay. Well, let's try a new one. I'm not sure what I did there. Uh... Undo opacity change. Obviously some keyboard combination I have managed to construct. 
has done something oddly interesting. And rolling back through Control Z just doesn't seem to get me the rest of the way there. Okay, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, some of the keyboard short but uh, shortcuts I figured were going to bite me, just because they're they're different and uh, they don't do the things that my muscle memory is is telling me they should be doing. So that's okay. These, let's find out. This particular raw file is not shown here, interestingly enough. 17 megs. That's about the average size. Hmm. You know what? This is not doing what I thought it would do. Maybe I just have to open it. That's the backyard. This is kind of fun because I'm learning how it fits together, but at the same time... <laughs> I feel like I'm swimming here through dangerous waters because I don't know where I'm heading. There we go. Hi, Tic Tac Taco. This is Krita. Giving this a drive, I'm usually a proponent of Paint.net, and this is my first swim through this this piece of software. So we're figuring this out as we go. I'm going to catch myself up again where I had done a duplicate and made an overlay to get some nice intensity out of it. Added a fill layer with some white because I was looking to make this more of an isolation shot. And that needs to be turned back into an overlay. A lot less to it. Good. All right, we don't need this layer anymore. Now I'm going to try this again. Where we said do those, make a group. All right, and we had gotten to this point before. This is where uh, the ship ran aground last time. What I want to do is, is it shift, I'm guessing, to maintain aspect ratio? There we go. Because I had messed that up last time, and it was something was off. Okay, that reverted it. Is it enter? Nope. Maybe? Oh, okay. I just had to wait. Got to be patient, I guess. Cool. And then... <coughs> Overexposure... Is that a tool? I'm sorry? Tic Tac Taco? The image itself does look a little overblown, yeah. This is kind of a, a quick test on that. And yeah, obviously not true. I, yep, I got you. Yep. It is a little, uh, little overtouched there. What I was aiming to do was try to brighten up the white a little bit, but using a fill layer, but that's also grabbing the um, the subject matter as well. So I'm gonna have to play with a better way to uh, to accomplish that. <coughs> Excuse me, dry throat tonight. All right, so as an initial test, it's a place to begin, that's good. I can kind of see how these controls are fitting together. Let's go deeper. So now that I've seen that, what I want to do is try out I wanted to try, oh, why not? Let's try a macro to begin here. Let's look at this one. I'm shooting with a Nikon D5300. Here is where I'm probably going to fall on my face because some of the controls, again, I just don't know where they are yet. Um, there was a sharpen control that I'm fond of just to kind of tweak some of the, the focal points here a little bit. I'm not sure where that would be in Krita. 
Let's see here. Start with that. And I'm just going to do a pseudo vignette because I don't know if there's a, obviously, honestly, a filter for that. Oh, there's a filter menu? Uh, filter, look at that. Let's take a look through these. Because I feel like I checked. Oh, maybe I was looking under tools. Yeah. So let's take a look through here. Sharpen. Perfect. Under enhance. Now, does it give me options or does it just do. Looks like it just kind of ran away with that. Uh... Do, 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 do. Looks like it did some kind of intelligent sharpen. I don't know if I have any control over it now. All right. What else is under there? <laughs> Boss, enhance, edge detection, colors. Okay, that's good to know the Gaussian blur is. Use that a lot. Pile paint. Okay, so these are pretty rudimentary. Okay, good. So yeah, it looks like I will have to add my own vignettes. That was something I'll miss from paint.net, but that's not too hard to, to bring over. Can do that with a fill layer. And really all we need to do here is cut a hole. If I can figure that out. Do the controls still work for that? Can I add? All right, good. So at least that fits together where I can add multiple shapes. Just good for my reference. Okay. And yeah, used to have control. There we go. Blow that out a little bit. And this doesn't have to be any bit of perfection. I'm just cutting a basis for kind of the framing of it. I do miss the uh, the zoom controls from paint.net because uh, what you used to be able to do, is that still work here? No. So you used to be use control and shift roll on the mouse and that would give you all the vertices of moving and it wouldn't matter where the mouse was pointing so much. But I do miss that control and I guess I'll just have to get used to that from this end of things. Interesting, you have two axes here. Okay. Really what we're doing here is just we're trying to add Kind of a, it's not really a border, but, oh, uh, okay. Let me see here. So, for panning, oh, so you kind of space bar and then click back and forth. I see. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to get used to it. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. You can explain these things to me as I go through that. It's very helpful. Thank you. Now, normally what a vignette would do is that it would be almost like a gradient of black to kind of give you a focal point of the image. Um, so yeah, cause it's so much easier if there's a calculated effect for that. But I'm not sure what this is doing. Well, this thing is just kind of spinning around. If it's actually doing something or not. Huh, okay. Uh, let's duplicate that. Can I? I guess it's still thinking about that. Okay, while well, this is thinking, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. So the other gotcha that came up to me the other day when I was giving my first test drive is I, I like to do a little bit of touch-up um, on my photos. Sometimes you'll see something that's a little bit off. You'll see a crack in something, there's a small blemish, there's a you know a fleck of dust. 
and I was looking for where, where's the rubber stamp because <laughs> uh, I was digging through all the tools and you know I just don't see it I see this patching tool but that really wasn't doing what I thought it would do so I went and looked it up and I found that it's actually in the brushes which was a surprise to me that's the first time in a photo alteration tool that it was a brush versus tool so that was a very interesting learning point that uh, I now know I'm thinking this is stuck because this is just not moving forward here for whatever reason interestingly enough oh, okay maybe it's just not responding to that control can I duplicate that still nothing turn her off weird okay uh, can I add something to paint on I guess it's still clocking on something Either that or I have just found a way to make it crash on my computer. I'm not sure which yet. Give it about five more seconds and uh, if that uh, doesn't produce some kind of good fruit here, we're just going to close it and start over again. Huh. Can I save it maybe? No, it won't even let me do that. Uh, oh, I can cancel the operation and save. Why don't we take the opportunity to do that? Save without waiting. Did that work? Okay. Well, thanks for the warning, but I'd rather have my work. All right. And I guess BAY is the layer format of Krita. Uh, okay, well, that was your suggestion, Krita. <laughs> What's a BAY? <laughs> oh, okay, KRA is, I guess, the thing I want. Otherwise, offering me something I can't do. Okay, so we're back to that. Looks like we're back up and running here. Huh. So maybe I'll try, I wonder if because I put the blur all the way up that that just confused it. I'm going to try maybe, try half power, see if that manages to complete. That's going to be interesting if Gaussian blur doesn't work out. Hey. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. That finally finished. I think I just threw too much at it. Um, I was trying out Gaussian Blur at full force, and it was just spinning and spinning and spinning, and it wasn't uh, finishing the effect for me, so... Looks like if I try it in smaller steps, that seems to work, and I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, this computer I'm working on is not state-of-the-art by any stretch. This computer was a hand-me-over that still functions reasonably well and is probably right on the threshold of what Crit will work on. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, it's spinning on that one again. It didn't like that at all. There we go. Okay. That really is a, quite a bit harder to get that in. Huh. I'll have to kind of see if there's a better method for vignettes in this, this tool. Huh. Alright, for now we'll throw that aside. What else here? It's a little harder to see that on a macro. I'm trying to think of the other exercises I typically do. That's actually pretty close to the point we do that. There's really nothing that really bothers me about that particular arrangement. So, all right, let's try another one here. Let's keep keep the juices flowing on this here. 
Let's go on to something that is maybe not a macro here. Let's try one of these. These are probably not the best um, implementation, I'll say, of this concept, but I've seen a lot of photographers try this out. And I just wanted to give the idea a try because I just thought it was kind of cool. Where you take a picture of something else taking a picture. <laughs> Says it's auto saving what I was working on. Crit is probably silently hanging out in the event log, going, Gosh, I hate this guy. I hate this computer. <laughs> uh, huh. Still auto saving that. I'm not sure why it's writing the temp though. That's kind of an odd location. Oh, because it's doing an auto save. Ah. Okay, I do have a couple things open. Into the task manager we go. Yeah, I noticed that even with paint.net that the higher the uh, the effect goes, the more CPU intensive it, it seems to, to spin to, and I'm not necessarily surprised by by that it's just I'm just trying to figure out how I can make the best use of the tool <coughs> excuse me let's spin it up again and we'll try out that other one again okay auto recovered my soldier it's very nice um, but no thank you Try this one. The auto saving is actually that's that's a nice feature too, in case you have to recover something. There we go. Alright, well that is definitely a little leached for color. I can already see that. So I may have had my F stop a little too high on it. Now, the other thing about this particular day when I took this, these are not what I'd call fantastic shots, okay? This was me going around my backyard trying out these ideas in the pouring rain, all right? So just so you have some uh, context of what was going on here, that this was not an ideal situation. This was purely kind of a fact-finding, proof-of-concept type of thing. See what we can do with this here. That's actually not too off from being level, amazingly enough. Alright, I want to copy that. Let's see how difficult this is. Guess that would be a paint layer. I just paste into it. Cool, okay. Now, another question here. Where is the hue saturation control? Image. That one I actually would like to know. I may have to ask Google that one. Either that or some kind of curves control, something to help me tweak color balance and luminosity here. My eyes are not finding it. To the web we go. All right, Krita. Okay, see where Reddit takes me. Uh, okay, color picker. I 
Doesn't sound like what I'm after, though. Yeah, that sounds like for manipulating your color selection, but yeah, this is more what I'm looking for. <laughs> Great, what was that way? Help help a brother out here. How'd you do it? <laughs> Layers filter adjust. What does that look like? Not seeing that. Oh, filter is under adjust. Is that it? HSV? Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yep. Awesome. So, yeah, I want to turn. I wanted to do something with that, but it's actually drawing out too much. The screen of the screen is messing with it a little bit. What else we got in there? Auto contrast, burn, nudge, invert. Curves! Yay! Wow, that was a beneficial thing that we just discovered there. All right. Is there a luminosity map in here? That's okay. We can make that work. Because I... I wish there was a median in this one. How to get rid of points. Hmm. Let's try that again. All right, we'll just bring that down a bit. Okay, so as a start, is there a way to get off that? There we go. Okay. Huh. So that gives me a lot of uh, insight as to where those particular tools are. I was actually starting to sweat a little bit because oh, that's not just from the, the light on me, by the way. Just to <laughs> figure out where these things are. But it's good to know where they are. That's very helpful. Thank you, Blue Stocking Mama. That's great. Huh. Different settings in that bar. I was looking in there. Um, yeah, I saw under default last used from paint.net. It's usually under the channel selector, but it's I wonder if it's just a different because I like to be able to tweak the luminosity sometimes that works the image as a whole, not just the color channels. Maybe I just haven't found it yet. Oh, cross channel. Maybe that's what I'm after. Cross channel. Which what cross channel is. What's that do? Okay. So. All right. We need to get a copy of this. And then move that up top. And I want to bring that back to a normal. Where is that? Don't want it to be an overlay anymore. Normal. There we go. And I want to try out that Gaussian blur again. Reason being is that what you can do if you can get this to work properly oh okay hsv adjustments hue saturation oh and there actually that was just helpful to see what the effect is i didn't get that before i'm not sure why 
progress bar. That's super helpful. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, okay. Luminosity. Yeah. Well, not that I want to change the hue here any, but yeah. And the lumens on the bottom. That's more what I'm after. That's it. Yep. It's just a different representation of it. Yeah. Yeah, in paint.net what they do is they actually overlay the luminosity control right on top of the curves control, which is kind of cool because you can do it graphically. You can drag it around the median. Um, but th this will work too. Thank you. <laughs> now I know where it is. All right. So getting back to the Gaussian blur here, what can be really cool is if you create a layer on top of everything and then limit it down most of the way for opacity, what can start to happen, I don't know if you can see, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. This is a little intensified, more than I'd like, is that you can start to add a dreamy quality to things. And I'm not looking to, to kill the sharpness of it, that's why you, you do it and then numb it down quite a bit but it can have a really interesting effect, particularly with nature shots, because it, it gives it almost a surrealism to it, very magical, and, <clears throat> and I love that element when it's done with high contrast and colors. A lot of the background's kind of blurred out here, so it's not gonna be as clear. I wanna see if I can find a better example for that. Try that out and see how it looks here. So that's cool. All right, let's dig into Another thing, maybe something here, yeah. Something that we can get some depth to that we can figure out a bit more. What we can do with it. A lot of these are macro shots because I was just messing around, but. Let's try this one. Looks a little, <coughs> a little blurry. I wonder how one came out. <coughs> oh, sorry. Ugh. Difficult day to do a lot of talking. <coughs> Definitely interesting, but the focus is in the wrong spot. Um, how do we go back and forth between open areas? Files. That's disappointing. Okay. That's not quick and work with what I want to do. <clears throat> Let's dig into something here. Let's try this. And you'll note all the wetness and drips. I mentioned it was raining that day, I believe. <laughs> okay, good. So we can do some work on this. Start by duplication, some overlay, bring out that green. Don't want to overexpose it though. That could get a little too much. Got to remember where we found all these things now. That was under adjust, saturation, bit. I'm still getting used to the response time of when I make a change and how fast that actually shows me the preview to make sure I haven't missed something. Every application is a little bit different. And sometimes it actually doesn't, just doesn't show it to you. Thank you. Yeah, I like that guy. He's just a little sprout coming up between some rocks. It's one of the ways I can make my backyard look interesting. 
<laughs> without showing you all the kids' toys. Uh, what was I doing here? I was looking for the sharpen control filters. I'm trying to remember what this is under enhanced. There it is. I kind of missed the manual control of the sharpness, though. That's kind of throwing me somewhat, but all right. That's about what we're after. Let's try it here. If we do a duplication of that, it's going to make the... Yep, that's good. And then I want to make this the blur layer. I want to try that one more time here to see if we can get that effect that I'm after. I wonder if I just confused it again. <laughs> it's already giving me uh Okay. Well... Looks like I, uh, I'm foreseeing some upgrades in my future here. This workstation has carried me quite some ways, but maybe, maybe, maybe that time has come. Not sure why we're still trying. Oh. Uh. Well, I kind of want if it can recover it. In it. Still just that one. Okay. Huh. Well. Back at it again. Okay. So thankfully it's not hard to get to the point where I was. Yeah, this computer just, uh, it, it has a love-hate relationship with Gauss. Hates me right now <laughs> from everything I'm throwing at it. Uh, likely is the case. We did a little bit of tweaking of the saturation up. We did this but we jumped into the lumo map and then we duplicated that which it's bordering on overexposed but that's actually not bothering me right now so much which it won't be a problem anyway if we can get the blur to work <laughs> all right i'm gonna do just just a little bit give me a little bit give me something All right, let's do it again. <laughs> okay, I can see it slowly jumping on there. Maybe we'll try this in a few passes. That's interesting. I wonder... I wonder why it doesn't show you the progress bar unless you try another effect. I wonder if there's a way to turn that on by default. Is there a way? Manage resources. That sounds intriguing. What does that mean? Okay, so that's not system resources. That's something else. Okay. Huh. Settings. Is there a way to have that on? Probably should have dug through this first. <laughs> Performance. Uh, okay. Well, I, if I got a file that's larger than 4 gigabyte, my Creator deserves to crash. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, eight CPUs for multi-threading. That's good to know in case I ever find myself in the serendipitous opportunity of having that many CPUs. Uh, maybe one day. I'll have to dig through that. Hmm. Okay, so it's not like immediately here. Okay, more blur.
Okay, and how about one more time? You can kind of start to see what I'm trying to do here around uh, these, some of these other leaves. It's unfortunately not as pronounced, and I think just because my, my computer, I can, I can hear the fans jumping on here now that I'm talking about it. Um, I think it's just too much for everything to handle with the stream and this. But that's that's pretty close to what I'm after. If you can see it there, it starts to add just like a mild, I don't want to say euphoria, but kind of a haze is more of an appropriate word where you get um, you get kind of that dreamy feel to it. Uh, progress bar is also in the layer. Really? Okay, maybe I'm just missing it. I tried to do another effect and it popped uh, very conveniently down the bottom. And I was just wondering if there's a way to make it do that. I'll have to check that out. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the best solution, right? Um, all right, so I should probably save this. <laughs> I don't know what a bay is. I don't know why it's just suggesting that to me. <clears throat> okay. We are getting somewhere. I wish I had a wider shot. In fact, maybe what we'll just do, these were my test images, but now that I've tried this a few different ways and we've learned some things, maybe, 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 let's actually go something that is not a test and actually dig something up here and let's see what we can do. That's probably not going to be great because there's not going to be a lot of colors. I want to see something that's got some range, some, some reach to it here. Uh, kind of boring for what we're trying to do. The trouble with shooting late in fall is that the colors start to diminish. You can do other creative things, you just don't get much color out of them necessarily. Some more macros. Mark on a tree. Uh, not really what I'm after. Maybe a smaller image. Do I have something we can work from on there? Hey, why not? Let's see if we can find a picture of myself. Hey, let's dig this one up. This is one of my goofballs. Hey, look at that. That is the sign that we exceeded my profile music. That's uh, Family Craft Dad, if you're familiar with him. <laughs> okay. Probably could have used a flash somewhat, or diffused flash, but that is what it is. So, let's try it out here. This might be get to be too much. I don't want to lose his eyes. That's where a lot of the life of the shot is. And he kindly wore a hat that was like five sizes too big for him. <laughs> but it's cool. I like the red and in, in the uh, kind of the, the dullness of, of late fall because there's no leaves. Everything is dying, but it really makes him pop out. That's what we're kind of trying to do here. Let's try this again. I wonder if that's also the case. If it's because it's an overlay layer, it might be less pronounced. Sometimes that happens too. Just to follow my thought process, I was wondering if the Gaussian blur was not quite as pronounced because it was an overlay layer last time I tried it. And it, it somewhat diminishes, yeah, that's a lot better. It diminishes the blur capability on an overlay layer versus 
uh, a normal layer. Looking for the progress bar. So I'm going to try to fool it into telling me what it's doing here. Let's see. Huh. Okay, I didn't have to. <laughs> There we go. I don't want to make him... ...become too blurred. But hopefully you can see that now. We're adding just a little bit to it. Where it makes him... ...makes him a little dreamy. The little dream that he is. Yeah, yeah, it really will pull out all the colors and intensify everything. It's it's a tricky thing because it can get to be too much very quickly. So it's something where you have to balance, you know, trim it down a lot um, when you flip it on. Or unless it's a, a dull image and you want to draw out a lot of the colors, that could be very helpful. But um, yeah, overlay is very cool. The other thing that can be very helpful, and I see it here... Um, is the additive one. If you have a dark shot or if you have a shot where it was like a really bright background and the thing you want to capture was dark, um, if you have a raw shot to work with particularly, you can use additive to really brighten that up and it won't get um, overblown for color because you're working in the raw. You can actually readjust the white balance along the way, which is really cool. Um, so additive is really cool for that as well. What I wanted to get to you, just as my last thing for the evening, is look at... I wanted to go back in the luminosity. I just... there, yeah. I wanted to give him a little more intensity along with that blur. That's pretty cool. I'm just going to try to... Ma oh, I'm, I'm inverted, so I guess I'd have to go this way. <laughs> match that little cock of the head he's got going on there all right I'm just I'm so curious if there's a way out there because I, I want to do it um, is there some kind of vin um, this is a French word so I'm really gonna mess this up vin vignette is that it <coughs> my gosh I actually got pretty close Okay, I see the words plug-in. That's helpful. Feather. Okay, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, feathering is not so popular in paint.net, but it was in Photoshop, so I kind of know of the concept a little bit. Okay. <coughs> yeah, laggy uh, for somebody else. Interesting. Let's just see if I can spot. Oh, I should probably look for that first. Where is this feather goodness they speak of? Under select feather. Where is select? Oh, select. Feather selection. Okay, so it'll actually have to be. Okay, so we don't even have to. Well, it's hard to think through how this would work. It's We have to do some of the math ahead of it. Yeah, we still need a fill layer to work with. I'm trying to create this pseudo effect. Maybe for the benefit of, of everybody watching, let me just uh, jump into paint.net here and try to duplicate somewhat what I'm after here. This may take a moment because it's got to do the transposition of raw into a program that doesn't natively support it. There's some DLLs that you have to tack on to make it work. So this will just take a minute. At least I get my progress bar. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so what I am after, actually here, um, Busaki Mama, I can show you the additive here, which might be helpful. Uh, what we would do is not that. Uh, duplicate and layer properties and additive, and there we go. 
where we're working inside the raw data and this starts to get a little lost but you can play with that a little bit again with curves um, and tweak that down so where it still looks good and you haven't lost the image which is really cool so anyway that's a little side trail the effect i'm trying to get to right now is vignette is this where i can make sure this is all the way up bring in the radius uh, and i'm working in an overlay or additive layer so that's not going to be very helpful to you let's merge those down there it really helps you to sharpen the focal point this is too intense obviously because it's pure black i don't want pure black that's just telling me where the radius is so i can work from that and then we can back off those pieces so that this is more of a psychological element which i really love in that you're not <coughs> so much like pointing a finger at something and saying look at this but because you're taking a bright object and you're dulling everything else it forces the eye to see what you want uh tool options box setting docker's tool options okay let's go over there uh docker's just following some helpful tips here in the chat tool options looks like they're on okay oh i see them over here okay okay basic yeah that can work in the other way where if you're not looking to overlay is good if you want to make the colors bolder additive is nice if, if the image is overall too dark or if there's elements that are too dark you can brighten them up um, very simply brush smoothing I actually haven't really played with the brushes very much. Well, um, let's see here. I'll make a nice big brush. Is that as big as it gets? A thousand pixels. Can I go bigger? Oh, this is interesting. Opacity, what's flow? What's that do? Oop, I'm not sure what I've done. Oh, you can actually change what you see. That's cool. Huh. Okay. Oh, am I working in a... Yeah, I'm working in a... Not a fully transparent layer. Let's just add a paint layer. Anything? What color am I working on here? White. White. Black. The dark. And okay. Oh, and I'm on clone. <laughs> That's not going to do what I want. Um, okay, this is getting to the place that I would like. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I wish there was a way to make this a lot bigger. Looks like that's the maximum size, though. I use, yeah, feather options. I was just reading about that. I bet you I can kind of get away with this, too, a bit. If I just play around with this. Um, can I do straight lines? Does that work? doesn't look like is there a tool in paint.net you can do something where you hold shift and it will do the common angles for you where you can like draw a 45 or a straight horizontal does it do that with this no wonder hmm oh okay circle sec okay let me before i get too far off the path here let's add another paint layer <coughs> circle Really all I want to 
to do... I want to get up there, but just like the, the edge of it. Let's try that. Right, right, I'm learning how it changes. <laughs> Is there a way to invert the selection? To get the other way? So I've done the circle, but I really want the outer radius of it. Image split, layer, select. Hmm. Okay, so the tools change. Oh, okay. Right. Mode. Vector replace. Wonder if there's a way to do that. Well, for now, then I'll maybe figure that out just so I don't bore you all <laughs> by wondering how to how to do that. I'll just make this a little simpler. Just make this. Roughly what I'm after here. Okay. I'm going to come back with some fill. And I would like to fill these in. Does that work? Is it getting over? Oh, there's a line tool. Okay, near the brush tool. Good to know. I want black. I think I've either confused it or done the wrong thing. I'm not sure which. Okay. Did something. Still catching up to me, I guess. Oh, invert selection. There it is. I just had my eyes weren't finding it before. Thank you. Use that next time there. It looks like it's slowly working its way through all my clicks there. Probably gonna have to be an insane amount though for what I'm after. Um, yeah, I think it's only feathering though within the selection. That's, that's not quite it. Yeah, I think for what I'm aiming for, wow, well, okay. So just, maybe I'm better off just hiding it. Worried my computer's gonna heat it again. Um, can I make it go away? I just want this to go away. My computer has become bitter. Huh. I'll play with that some. I'm really curious if there's an easier way to accomplish that. There we go. It's starting to come around. I think it's still just processing all those things I was trying to do. Really, that's, that's kind of it. Is it's Control Shift I. Thank you. That'll be helpful. Control Shift I. Um, is just to kind of get this focal effect. I'll have to see if there's a better way or a plugin perhaps to do that because it was really easy in Pink.net. I showed you that. There's got to be something like that here. <laughs> Figure it out. If not, maybe, maybe I can create something. I can all benefit from this exploration. So, all right. I think that's probably a good place to uh, to call this a night. We've been at it for about a solid hour. There's been a lot of learning going on. I've become. I feel like already 
I've had a good learning experience, and I really appreciate uh, Blue Stocking Mama your insights to this application. I know this has been your your playing ground for quite some time, so it's really super helpful to have your uh, perspective on that. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you to anybody else who uh, managed to stop in and um, have a look. Um, please do uh, drop in at natesorallo.com and say hello. Connect with me on all the social media platforms, on YouTube, on Twit, uh, Twitch, which is also being multicast at the moment. Connect with me on Twitter, on Facebook. Say hello. Give me some feedback on whether or not this was a helpful experience if you're starting out. Um, helpful if it's just good for your self-esteem to see somebody else uh, struggling through learning something. And uh, I do hope to see you again. I'm going to continue to try out this tool. It does have some powerful capabilities. And yes, it looks like I've got some upgrades to make to make it work that way. But I do like where this is going. There's some good potential and control that I can see here um, that, that doesn't happen in paint.net. So I want to continue trying this out and see if I can add that to my uh, capabilities as a photographer and enhance what I'm trying to do and um, hopefully give a better quality presentation and add some some greater depth to uh, to my exploration of the art so thank you so much I wish you a pleasant evening um, thanks again Blue Stocking Mama for the guidance and, and comments and I hope to see you again next stream we do it every Saturday night 9 p.m. Eastern hope to see you at the next one take care